question relates to how prevalent is resistance in your career? And I, I can put that, I guess, in context if anyone needs that. I doubt that you do, but and yeah, how do you negotiate that? Resistance to your like for example, I I work next door in Johnstown. If I found out that Jim Parenti was bringing in a consulting team, I would clam up so fast. <laughs> okay, because I know the budget constraints that higher ed is under right now, and I would think they're going to be facing some difficult. You know, this is me running through my head as a staff member. They're going to be thinking about how can we downsize to meet current budget shortfalls, blah, 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 blah. And so I would not want to talk with a consultant. So that's, I'm just putting that in my own perspective. So I'm wondering, in your business, how often do you get that where you have to face resistance and how do you negotiate around it? Great question. I'll start, first of all, uh, not the um, so much the, the threatening side of it from a standpoint of job uh, security or anything like that, as much as just the fact that any time somebody is bringing in a consultant, uh, the consultant is almost invariably involved in a change activity. Mm -hmm. So whether the resistance is to the fact that they're going to lose their job or just the fact that life is not going to be the same as it was yesterday, right, right. tomorrow, um, introduces that change. So as a consultant, uh, whether you're leading or part of the team of that of consultancy that's that's affecting or recommending whatever that change, one of the important things that you have to do is to engage the people that are there. And you have to get on their side. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can show up with domain expertise that you actually know your stuff and therefore should be listened to. But quite frankly, that's not usually the one that gets it. The one that usually gets it is, is because you create a, a trusting relationship with that, uh, with that person, where they, they see what your interest is. So, um, which is not an easy thing to do, to, to sit down and actually develop that type of thing, and it takes time. You don't build those, those types of relationships just because you walk in and start talking that way. In fact, quite the opposite will probably happen. So, a lot of it is you have to take the time to get that level of engagement that develops that type of trust that allows them feel more vulnerable and comfortable. And we could talk for hours about how you try and actually do that as part of the conversation. But it, it is a time consuming uh, and uh, uh, energy, I mean, it's something that really takes a lot of energy to do. You don't just come in spouting the facts and, and uh, expertise. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, in, in the work that I do, resistance is always an issue. And uh, I try to get my um, clients or my, my leaders interested in their resistance because we almost always naturally resist on some level change that, that we even know is good for us. So it's a constant force. And uh, as, as you said, there's technologies for dealing with that and you know, methods for trying to win people's cooperation. I mean, you failed as a consultant if you've alienated the people that you're trying to help. Um, they won't implement what you recommend or what they develop, and uh, then the, that, that's a failure. So one has to deal with that all the time. I can add to that a little bit. Typically, in my experience, the people who are most resistant or reluctant to help uh, are afraid. And in a lot of cases, they're also the ones who probably should be more afraid than other people. When you join a department as, as, as someone who's helping on a project or whatever it is, um, the folks who are really excited about it are the folks who are going to help the most, who are going to provide the most value, and that'll be clear throughout the duration of the project. Uh, I've personally been on an engagement where it seemed obvious at the beginning that we were building a system to um, obviate the need for a number of people in that department. And to a person, there were four or five people in a particular role who were not at all excited about it. And uh, as you mentioned, un unwilling to provide uh, sort of a frame of reference with how everything's done currently because they were afraid we'd find a faster, better, more efficient, smarter way to do it. And then, of course, we 
fire three or four or five of them. Um, I've never been in a position to recommend letting go of anyone at a client site, uh, nor do I, I see that being a part of my future. However, it didn't take long before you sort of sit those folks down and say, well, one of you is probably going to end up being the champion of this effort, and then when we leave, you'll be the one who knows the most about the new system, making you the most valuable. And then, except for one person, almost everyone got really excited about learning more, about participating more, because they did see that, that you know, we were in there for a reason. We just don't up here and make a lot of money to do whatever it is we feel like doing and then just leave. Someone asked us in. Someone needed us there for one reason or another. It may very well be because they've got some recalcitrant employees we have to kind of work with and try to find a way to uh, make it easier. But um, by and large, it's, it's you know, like you said, it's just a matter of finding a way to connect with people, finding a way to help them see how they can provide value, how they can feel like they're a part of the solution, and then just going forward. I just say one one more additional thing about this, um, and and maybe you're you're all too young to uh, to have seen this, but the movie Office Space. Have people seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. The two consultants, my favorite characters in the movie, <laughs> okay, are kind of what you were describing, right? It's not really how it works, um, and, um, and and so one has to partner with the people who are going to execute, and. Uh, if the organization hasn't done that well, then I'm obligated to confront the organization about, hey, you haven't done that very well. Your boss hasn't said anything to you or the team about what we're doing, and and then you get perceived like the consultants in office space. By the way, that hurts your business if you get perceived that way. You don't want to be seen as the hatchet person who comes in and always recommends, well, you know, reduce the staff by 10%. Uh, who is going to then cooperate with you or hire you for the next project? So one has to be concerned about about how yours is viewed by the people that you help. Um, what would you suggest that a college graduate does in order to get that first entry-level interview? Um, how would you get in contact with your recruiters? Um, what methods would one use? Accenture um, is on campus, so definitely keeping um, close tabs with your career center. We um, strong relationships with um, the university's career centers, both on the, the IT side and the art side and the Carlson side of things. Um, but definitely our website uh, is a way, uh, networking with, you know, with people, alums that maybe have joined us, that kind of thing. Um, that's how you find out about our opportunities. And on that, um, you know, consulting firms will come in a lot of times campus for those that do recruit on campus to um, you know, do information sessions. Um, you could also do things like uh, case competitions, uh, things like that. I know Carlson and we've done that before, just the way we did. Um, and that's just a great way for us as consultants to get to know you guys on a more personal basis, and that's just a great networking tool. Um, and it definitely gives you a step in the right direction for getting that first interview. The more you know the consultants, the better the chance. I also uh, recommend it that you talk to uh, friends, relatives, your friends, parents, those types of things. There are a lot more people in consulting than you probably know. And if you get a chance to network with them, you show your aptitude, you show your interests, in, you know, you know, the zest for learning that, that what they want when they're out interviewing. They may not have the position that you're looking for, but they may have an entry opportunity that at least gets you into the organization where you start to get known, start to get seen for the kinds of things you're capable of doing. And then when opportunities come up, they would, they would look at somebody inside who already has a track record or at least is known as a, as a good performer. 